Hi, this is David Williams from Okanagan College in Kelowna, Canada, and today I am going to talk about electromagnetism and give some of the basics about electromagnetism, and specifically today, at least for this, this uh, video, focus mostly on quantifying some magnetic properties. But before we get into that, I, I first want to say that, that this video is targeted for engineering technology students, and then specifically my EOEM 236 students who are mechanical engineering technology students learning about electricity, magnetism, and electronics. But of course, anybody interested in electromagnetism will hopefully learn something here. And also before I, I get going, I just wanted to point out that conacademy.org has some has a great series on, on magnetism. And there's about 13 videos there, and they really they focus on first principles, so on the physics behind electricity and magnetism I mean, it's the principles behind magnetism I highly recommend it especially the first one uh, which just goes into the general details of uh, general general things about magnetism and then from there it goes on to more specifics I'm going to diverge from those particular videos and focus on things that I think are hopefully a little bit more applicable to engineering technology students maybe not as applicable for physics students but but definitely for engineering technology students so like I said, I'm going to focus on quantifying some magnetic properties. So before I, and before I get into that, what I want to look at is just a basic magnet. So what we got here is a, a bar magnet with the, the north and the south pole. And one of the ways that we like to, to visualize what's going on with a magnet is we draw these magnetic field lines. You see these green lines going out from the north and into the south. And we've got, we've got varying numbers of them. And, and what you need to have for any of these magnetic field lines is they'll always start on the north and end on the south, and they'll also never cross. And typically, the denser, the, or the more of these lines that you have, the stronger the magnetic field is. So you sort of notice this, that the closer we are to the magnet, the closer together these magnetic field lines are. And I mean, there's only a few lines here, but. Closer, closer to the magnet, more magnetic field lines. Further away from the magnet, fewer magnetic field lines. So this is sort of the first brush at, at qualifying and quantifying what's going on in the magnetic field. Now the next thing to, to consider is that magnetic fields and electric fields, magnetic circuits and electric circuits, are fairly similar. And let's look at this simple electric circuit. In this particular electric circuit we have a, a cause or a voltage source that's sort of like the push behind what's going on and there's an opposition to the push and depending on how much opposition to the, per to the push we have, or how much resistance we have to the voltage, we're going to have a certain amount of current that flows. So we have a cause, an effect, and an opposition. And if you look at these, if we were to, to, to write these down, Table go. Here's my table. So we've got a table here of some electrical quantities and some magnetic quantities, and I want to focus on the electrical quantities first. So in particular, these four. So I'll go in bold right here. So voltage is the push, which results in a current, and how much current you have depends on how much resistance there is to the push. Now, very similar to the magnetic fields, magnetic circuits, I should say, is is a or electric circuit is a magnetic circuit. A magnetic circuit is has some kind of cause, and there's some kind of opposition to that cause, and depending on how much opposition to that cause there, there is, there's going to be an effect. And so what are these three quantities? How, what, what are they specifically in magnetic circuits? What's the cause? What's the opposition? What's the effect? I'm going back to my table. Over here in the magnetic quantities, they're lined up with their electric circuit analog. So, the cause of a magnetic circuit, the cause of, of that magnet, magnet that you feel, is, is something called magnetomotive force, and it's measured in amp terms. And you'll notice that amps over here for magnetic force, motive force, and amps over here for current. And that's actually because magnetic fields are caused by changing electric fields, and a current is moving charges. Any charge creates an electric field, and 
if you have moving charges, then you're going to have moving electric fields. So these moving electric fields are creating the magnetic fields. And that is why we measure MMF in amp terms. And actually, it's just, uh, actually the units are just amps, because terms, terms are, are technically unitless. The magnetic motor force is measured in amps. The more current you have, the more of the cause of the magnetic field you have. Now, the opposition to the magnetic motor force is called the reluctance. And I've designated here R. It should actually be like a, a, a nice sort of fancy squiggly R. And reluctance is measured in amp terms per Weber. Now, what, okay, well, what's Weber? Let's go back to, to the, the line before that. And the, the result, the effect, analogous to the current, is something called the magnetic flux, which we did better phi. Oh, that was a study, you know. Um, and we measure the magnetic flux in Weber's. So going back to our magnetic circuit, our cause is something called the MMF. Oh, sorry for the giant letters. See if I can make them smaller. And the effect over here is the flux. Apparently I can't. Maybe by phi, and the opposition is the reluctance. So very, very analogous to the, the electric, the electric circuits. And I don't have this clear. Let's go clear my screen here. Okay. Now, in electric circuits, I'm going to compare electric circuits and magnetic circuits here. Again, and, and comparing how, how the flux and the magnetic motor force are analogous to the voltage and the current, and where that an analogy breaks down. So, if we were to take that electric circuit and with, with that given resistance, we were to take the voltage and just start increasing the voltage, what we're going to get is the current's also going to increase, and it's going to increase in a linear manner. One step up in voltage is going to cause a step up in current. And take another equal step in voltage, and cause another equal step in, in the current, equal increase in the current. Now, for a magnetic circuit, if we were to plot the analog to voltage, which is the MMF, the analog to current, which is the flux, what we would find is a nonlinear relationship. So we start increasing the MMF, and for an electromagnet, increasing the MMF actually means increasing the current. So increasing the current, and you'll see, it sort of increases quickly at the beginning, and then starts to flatten off. And then actually, it reaches some point where you're at the maximum, and this point is called saturation. So no matter how much you increase your current or your MMF, you're not going to have any more increase in the saturation. Right? But if you're at saturation, you're not going to have any more increase in the flux. And now if we started to decrease the MMF and decrease the current, what we're going to find is, is an effect called hysteresis. So instead of just following the curve back down to zero, that magnetic field, the magnetic flux, is actually going to not decrease in the same manner. It will also actually reach another saturation over here on the, on the negative side. So we're increasing MMF, Reaching saturation, decreased and we have to actually follow a different path back to a negative saturation. And then we start to increase the MMF again, and we'll get something that looks like this. So starting at zero, increasing to saturation, and then decreasing from saturation. We don't follow the same path because of this, this, this effect of, of hysteresis. And then again, we start increasing the MMF because of this hysteresis. We don't actually follow the same path on the curve. So this this effect is showing this hysteresis. Hysteresis, and there's all sorts of places where we'll hysteresis, all sorts of places where we we'll find hysteresis. And magnetic uh, magnetic circuits is one of them, especially if you've got some kind of ferromagnet magnet within your electromagnet.
let's uh, clear this. Now, if we go back to the table that I had, showing the relationship between electrical quantities and magnetic quantities, you'll see that the table carries on. Oh, that's some equations here for the resistance and reluctance. But I've got, I've got a couple of other things that we haven't encountered in the electrical quantities because they're, I mean, they're very important, but they're not something that we, we're going to use very much in, 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 in technology. But something that's analogous in the magnetic circuits, is, and those two things are the, the magnetic flux density. So that's basically how much flux you have per unit of area. And the units for magnetic flux density are weathers per meter squared, and magnetic flux per meter squared, magnetic flux per area. And we designate that, the units for those, as Teslas. And the other one is magnetic field density. So this is if you have a magnetic field that's created, how far that magnetic field traverses. So if you're looking at this particular picture, we've got magnetic field is, is taking this path for the, if, you're, if you're this close taking this path if you're this close to the magnet and <laughs> okay so you know what I'm doing tomorrow and that the length of that if we use the length of that and then we can figure out what the field density is. So it's the magnetic motor force over that particular length gives us the field density, or what I designated here as H. <coughs> so the flux density and the magnetic field density are, are very important concepts. And, and actually, we can we can plot it just like we did with the magnetic motor force and magnetic flux. You can you can similar, similarly plot a relationship between magnetic field intensity and the magnetic flux density. And let's see if I can find that picture. B versus H. So we also have that same same hysteresis curve. Um, if I started at zero, I'd be starting at this point here, and increasing increasing H is going to increase B up to some saturation point, and then I'll get the, the hysteresis curve like you have to see here. And the relationship between B and H, this is, this is an important relationship, depends on a, a property called, a, a quantity called the permeability, which we give by the Greek letter mu. So mu is the permeability, and that's basically uh, the analog analog analogous quantity to conductance. So it's how easily some kind of substance, whether that's air or, or a ferromagnet like iron allows the flux to go through it and that allows the lines of flux to go through it so the, the higher the permeability the easier these magnetic lines of flux go through it and the relationship between B and H based on the based on the based on based on on U and that relationship is the magnetic flux density is equal to the permeability times the field intensity. And this, this permeability is, is a property that you can look up for, for any substance. For example, air, the, the permeability is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. For some kind of some ferromagnets, it would be a few orders of magnitude higher than that. So that's a, a very important relationship.